I'm Kimberly. And I'm Dan. And we are here with WDW Castle News, and today we are doing an in-depth review on the All-Star Movies Resort. Yes, we, we love the Valley Resorts. We've stayed at all of them, with the exception of the uh, Art of Animation. But uh, the All-Star Movies is one of our favorite over at the All-Star Resorts. Of course, you have the three All-Star Resorts in a row. You have the uh, All-Star um, Sports, All-Star Music, and the Movies. Uh, the All-Star Sports and Music were the first two value resorts on property. They opened back in 1994, um, where the All-Star Movies is the newest in the row of All-Star Resorts, and that opened January 15, 1999. Uh, it's, it's a good size resort. Uh, it's, it, it contains uh, 1,920 rooms. Uh, the rooms are about 260 square feet, so they're not quite as big as your deluxe uh, rooms. So you, they're a little tight, but hey, for what you pay for, you get a great value, and how, how much time do you really spend in your room when you're at Disney World? Uh, the average room holds four guests. If you have a child in a crib, you can work in a fifth guest, and Disney will pr provide a crib for you if needed. Uh, so yeah, but it's, it's I like the value resorts a lot, and um, out of all of them, I've really grown to like the movies the best, and we'll kind of explain into the video why we really like this resort. Yeah, definitely. And for the resort, there are a total of 10 buildings, excluding the main lobby. So there's 10 actual hotel buildings and then the main lobby. Um, and these 10 buildings are split up into five sections, two hotels per, per section. Yeah. So I'll go over the sections real quick. Uh, the Fantasia section will be the, the preferred section. Once you step out of the main lobby, it's the closest uh, section to the main lobby in the resort. And it, it's, it's a it's a great area, well themed, but we're, we'll go through those one by one. So, uh, off the to the right of the Fantasia section, you'll have the Dalmatians section, mm -hmm. and then further back to the right behind that is the Mighty Ducks section. Uh, if you go straight through the Fantasia to the rear of the resort, you'll come into the Love Bug section. Uh, they call it the Love Bug for, for those people that know the movies, Herbie the Love Bug. It's a really nicely nicely done section as well. And then probably the most popular section is to the left, and that's the Toy Story section. And wow, is that one really themed. They did a great job at this resort with the Disney theming. The resort has two pools, and uh, we have what the main pool uh, in the Fantasian area, mm -hmm. right as you step outside the main The big lobby. pool, the main pool. Yeah. And then off into the right, uh, back in the Mighty Duck section, you have the, uh, the Duck Pond pool, which is the secondary pool, a little smaller, but uh, a great location as well for those folks staying back there. That is the furthest walk um, from the main building and from the bus transportation center. A good thing to keep in mind is that all of the buildings on the movie's property, the All-Star movies, they're all preferred except for Herbie, which is interesting because preferred is more expensive than non-preferred. Um, and... That means the Ducks, which is actually the furthest walk from the lobby, is a preferred building where Herbie Lovebug is not, and um, it's only considered preferred because they have their own pool. Now you have to take that into consideration if you ask for a preferred room, you're not guaranteed what building, and you could actually be the furthest walk from the lobby and paying that extra money. So that's that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, it's it's, it's strange how they set that up, but it's a. Uh... It works out great because it's one of the resorts where you can actually, if you stay in the non-preferred buildings, the, the love bug section, it's not that far of a walk at all. It's, not it's at all. a very short walk to the pool, to the main pool, and a very short walk to the main building, whereas the layout of some of the other, for, that, for example, the music, all-star music, it's laid it's out very height. different. So <laughs> if you're back in the country buildings or the, um, the Broadway buildings and the all-star music, it's a real hike to get to the even the, the main pool, let alone yeah. the buses in the morning. So you really got to... So there, it would make a difference to pay that extra money. But at the movies, I don't think it's really worth it. Especially because you just don't know what room you're going to get. Yeah. No, but... that's... And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great resort. Uh, we've stayed there a few times. And uh, like I said, we've been at most of the value resorts. We've stayed at all the all-star resorts. And of all three, the movies is our, our favorite. Yeah. Definitely. It's so well-themed. Yeah, I mean, all the All-Stars are themed. They, they went all out with, with theming. However, when you go to the music, 
there's a lot of Broadway theme and country. Um, there's just it's like genres. Yeah, jazz building, and it's 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 not Disney per se. Mm -hmm. they Same throw with some, sports. Yeah, at the pools they throw some Disney twists. You have the Ariel pool, and then you have at the main pool the three caballeros in the center of the guitar pool. So they do throw some Disney twists in, but nothing like at the movies where everywhere you turn is a Disney reference. So that's why we like it. The sports is just that. The sports, they, they got football, sports. basketball, baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, just small Disney pit, uh, twists thrown in there where the movies is all Disney all the way. So it, it's, it's a great area. Um, the main lobby, uh, it's, it's a beautiful building. It's called Cinema Hall. And it, uh, it contains the area where you, you check in. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a wonderful arcade in there. Yeah, and one of the other cool things about the hall, which some people just walk by and don't even, like, they don't even realize, your magic band is, it has your name attached to it and all that great stuff. And when you walk in the main doors in the front and when you walk out the main doors or in the main doors at the pool on the opposite side, they have little displays that look like little trophy cases. And it actually, when you walk in, it kind of senses your magic band and it will throw your name as like MVP or whatever it, you know, it makes up different scenarios, different awards, and it'll actually post your name in that when you walk by, which is something fun to look out for, especially little kids. It's amazing to see your name. Yeah, they've done this to all the re all-star resorts. Uh, when you're in the sports, it'll be a trophy for MVP, like you said, for mm -hmm. a game. In the music, it's a music award. And then in the movies, you know, as you walk by, it's an Academy like, Award mm -hmm. for, for the move best picture or best actor in a picture or actress and it's, it's pretty interesting to see as you walk through you know it, it gives you a smile on your face when you see your picture come up or your child's picture come up and they get all excited and oh we won something it's, yeah it's, great. So <laughs> it, it's, it's a good twist that they do there but yeah they used to have all the arcades um, in most of the resorts throughout Disney World and a lot of them they, they've changed over the years they used to be the arcades you would find at a lot of the uh, ocean side resorts well, prizes yeah you get redemption tickets and they've done away with all that but they've got great arcade games they still have the classics like skee ball and all mm -hmm. and in the movies resort it's called the real real fun arcades r-e-e-l for the real of movies it's and it's, it's pretty neat they it, they they've done a good job in that resort yeah and then they also have an outdoor bar by the pool and that is the silver screen spirits bar which is nice and convenient for those who want to have a drink and out by the bar, out by the pool and they don't have to go inside. They can like be in their bathing suit and whatever. So yeah, the bar is a great spot. They, they offer regular drinks and they offer souvenir, very large uh, glasses mm -hmm. that you can share with these crazy exotic fruity drinks. Yeah, they have fun things, keeping it very vacation. -y. It's, it's fun. Yeah. And, and actually if you're looking at the bar from the pool area to the right, there is an outdoor gazebo type uh, that's set up against the building and it's called the, the um, what is it the yeah. real spot yeah. and they show movies there at night so select nights they'll actually come out and they'll set up a projector and, and when we were there they last, out popcorn yep they give out free chip bags of chips and popcorn while you're there which is so fun yeah it's a neat yeah first time we went there we were shocked that they came out and they're not little snack bags they gave out no. full big bags of popcorn to yeah. everybody so you really had plenty to snack on and enjoy a movie I, I gotta say as much as i enjoyed it i probably won't do it again though because it, it takes time away from the parks and you're when you're done you're like wow i could have seen this movie at home <laughs> and yeah. saved some time and, and did what i you know did some exciting Disney stuff while here I but agree. if you need a break you have young kids you just want to sit and relax they have ceiling fans in the gazebo it's not that hot mm -hmm. and you sit and relax and, and they, they make you comfortable and it's, it's a good little yeah. break uh, it's not something like you said with our style of vacation that we would probably do again but it is just a nice offering that they have another fun thing that you can do yeah yeah no it's, it's great and of course in the main building another feature is the food court all the uh, Valley resorts have a food court so unlike if you're used to staying at a moderate or deluxe resort a lot of them just have sit-down restaurants mm -hmm. the food courts are a great option though because they give you such a variety oh there's so many things you can choose from and it's so at a great things. value so it's uh, the, the food court there is called the world premier food court and uh, I can't say enough good things about it I, yeah it's got some it. of my favorite things I know when we were there last time the chicken pot pie that was, <laughs> oh my goodness it was so good it doesn't, you know, it gives you, so there's so many options there. It's not just the regular, like, fast food that you're getting in the park. It's, like, you can change it up. You can get, like, steak or you can get, like, just a yogurt. You know what I mean? You can get, like, a, such a variety of things. They have meals. They have snacks. They change it up every day. There's something different. 
it's it's a good variety. Yeah, I think right now one of the big features for dinner, uh, the most expensive feature you can get is a or entree is the strip steak, and mm-hmm. it comes with two sides and, and a roll, and it's uh, about fourteen dollars and change if I remember correctly, and it's they do a good job just yeah. to, like anywhere else on Disney property. The food is delicious and. Um, the hours are good too because a lot of times you get back from the park and you'll still have uh, the main entree windows might be closed but uh, sometimes they'll have the uh, I've seen the Asian windows some Chinese food mm. being served and the pizza windows open pretty late as yeah well. the that, pizza window does stay open and the grab and go section where all the snacks and desserts are you mm-hmm. can just go in and it's just like kind of like a, a quick mart at your local town just a bunch of freezers and refrigerators where you can just grab stuff and take it back to your cups room cups of dirt sometimes <laughs> they even have like sushi in there like they have little platters of sushi like you could get it like shop right and they have all different juices and like fruit and vegetables and like or well i don't know if they have vegetables but (laughs) (laughs) but fruit and all different kinds of snacks that you can grab in there and they have the refillable drink stations which is so convenient that you can buy a mug for the length of your stay however long your stay is and obviously you get to take the mug home but it has a little sensor on the bottom and they have big big islands that are like all the way around and they're just drink stations everywhere and you can just refill your mug all day long which is so nice because drinking it's hot you want to drink stuff and it can get expensive <laughs> oh sure yeah they i believe the current price is 17.99 for the length of stay mug uh, now if you're not going to be there that long they do have smaller options if you just want to have your mug work for uh, two or three days you can pay a lot less i think the, the lowest amount is like eight dollars and you can have mm-hmm. a two or three day um, mug refill and the only limitation is uh, they used to not have any limitation yeah. now they put a timer on so once you refill they just you wait two minutes there's a two minute count before out. you can fill it back up because they i guess they don't want people filling it pouring it into a different cup for somebody else and then filling it back up which i get that but at the same time like i know some people who can fill it up and chug the whole cup and then want more <laughs> immediately but you have to wait two yeah. minutes yeah absolutely. it could be worse but it is it is a stipulation <laughs> and those islands have coffee the coffee's not hooked up to the refillable mug so if you do go in there with a cup or your mug you don't have to wait any time the coffee uh, is always set to free and i believe the gold peak iced tea is also set to free they yeah it's just like it. the sodas yeah it's just the sodas really that that are hooked up to that hot chocolates available uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's always a, a nice treat in the morning especially if you go in the cooler times of the year yeah definitely so, so yeah, the the Premier Food Court is an excellent option, and um, the good thing about the All Stars, they all the food courts serve different entrees every night. So if you really don't want something from your food court, just walk across the parking lot. It's such a short walk. It's so and, close. And, and go to their other food court and see what they're offering because it's uh, like you mentioned, you love the chicken pot pie there, but they don't serve that. In the sports, the, yeah, I don't the, think they have it. No, yeah. No, and. Uh, they have a, a really good uh, meatball sub in the music that they don't have at the movie. So there's there's a good chance that you could find anything you want if you walk. If you just take a little yeah. walk, yeah. Another thing to keep in mind if you're planning a vacation and you're looking to go into the All-Stars to save a little bit of money if you're going on a budget, because these are value resorts. So a lot of people who are going to these resorts are trying to do it on a budget. Um, you can pack like microwavable popcorn and different stuff like that. And they have microwaves in the food court just to use. So if you wanted to pack things like that, some snacks, that's gonna save you a good amount of money. Also in the main building, you have a Donald's double feature store, the gift shop. And uh, just like anything else, you can find a plethora of Disney stuff that that you wanna take home with you or use in the parks. And again, it kind of goes with the theming. If you don't see something in the movies resort just walk across the parking lot there's different things yeah they have you know obviously the general stuff that floats over and everybody kind of has but they do have certain things and certain gift shops that you can't find in the others sure the sports definitely they when i've gone to the sports i see they actually have a lot of sports figurines yeah Um, and they have like baseballs yeah and like different like actual sport items yeah it's it's so you got a lot of option there when you have those three resorts packed tightly together Mm -hmm. Uh, there's couple downsides to the resorts uh, in general Um, they all generally depending on the time of year they generally share one bus so when the bus comes they'll start at the sports resort then leapfrog over to pick up people at the music and the movies is the last so 
that's the biggest con about the movies is that you're last in line, so you may have to wait an extra bus if it's a busy season mm -hmm. or a large group gets on. You, they may not stop because they'll be full. Uh, but we've never had a problem, really. It, it's been pretty smooth. And at the end of the night, when they do drop-offs, they tend to separate. If the parks are closing or if it's just the opening of the parks, they do run designated buses to each resort. Because that's their busiest time. Yeah. Then then as you get a little later into the day and throughout the day, they, they combine to one bus. So that's that's probably the biggest con that I would have about staying at the All-Star, where if you want to stay at a... Movies, specifically. Well, sp yes, specifically. Um, we... We've seen issues at all of them, but if you're at the sports, people say, oh, the sports theming ain't great for Disney, but you're the first drop off on the bus, so that will attract yeah. people. But I, I just love the Disney theming, so it's worth a little bit of extra time to wait for a bus and stay at the uh, movies, for me anyway. Now, if you're over at the Pop Century, you're on your own bus route, so that's mm -hmm. an advantage of that value resort. You don't share a bus ever with any other value resorts. Yeah. So that's the benefit over, over there. But... Um, yeah, so uh, let's see what else have we not covered or well specifically more towards the just the layout and what it looks like because we talked a little bit about the themes of the actual hotels themselves but more specifically since this is a very disney themed hotel it is a great picture area oh, as well yeah. you can get some really good pictures from the movies we have um when you go first in, obviously the Fantasia pool is amazing. Um, the backdrop to that pool is like the big rock with Sorcerer Mickey on top. So that's very fun. And if you're in the pool, that's like a great backdrop. And against the walls, they have the big um, broom and buckets, right? Yeah. So that's super fun. Um, and then straight back through where Herbie the Love Bug is, they have a winner's circle. So it's like a big platform with like a big arc and it says winner circle and I think there's like a trophy or something like yes, that on the side. Yes. So that's a cute area to have, you know, stand underneath and take a picture in the winner circle. You have a favorite photo spot back there, right? Yes, and it's if you have a family of four or five, there's an area right by the winner circle. If you're standing facing the winner circle, just turn to your left. And what Disney has done, being Herbie the Love Bug, they've buried tires in the ground and they staggered them back towards the building. And just above them will be Herbie the Love Bug sticking out of the building. It's the large icon that's uh, plastered on the side of that building. And if you take a family members and line them up and let them sit on the tires and just kind of go down on one knee and get a good picture of just a whole family spaced out across that field with Herbie above. It's just a great picture spot for me. I, yeah. I, it's one of my favorite pictures from a couple of years ago. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, this whole resort is spectacular for pictures. I can only think of one resort that may beat it out, and that's the Art of Animation. But yes. that'll be another <laughs> show in itself. But yeah, so it, it, it is a great area. Uh, I think one of the favorite picture spots, though, is Toy Story. Oh, definitely. When you go into Toy Story, which is to the left of the Fantasia area, there are so many picture opportunities when you walk to like the middle courtyard, I guess you yeah. would call it, um, between the two buildings, there is a big door and you're entering Andy's, um, Andy's bedroom, which is so fun. I know we have some pictures um, at the door, like reaching up towards the doorknob, which is super cute area. And then they have blocks that say Buzz on one side and they have blocks that say Woody on the other side. And that is a super cute picture. And they also have like, the little toy like race car yeah they have a remote control car that yeah, would be just laying on the floor in andy's room and you can get you can like sit in it and that's a cute yeah. picture there's like a ton of pictures the toy story <laughs> is probably my favorite theme area and it has the most in it and with toy story land just coming out this summer i'm sure it's like super popular to try and get some Toy Story themed pictures sure, so absolutely. that's a little less crowded I'm sure than Toy Story Land itself if you wanted to get some <laughs> pictures but yeah so that's that's probably our favorite spot in the whole mm -hmm. resort now if we jump over to the looking at the uh, back of the main lobby to the left there and we go into the Dalmatians area it's it's a great area if you're into the, the 101 Dalmatians they have the icons uh, match on each side I believe the only difference is different color collars on the dogs, but that they have the two large Dalmatians up against the buildings, and, and they're obviously larger than life, about three and a half stories tall. 
And in the food court, uh, not the food court, but the courtyard area in the center, they had a couple picture spots. One mm -hmm. that I really enjoyed uh, was the, the TV, TV yeah. where, where you can step around in a um, large TV and pose and get a picture as if you're in that TV And the scene. little Dalmatian is watching the TV. Yeah, so it's you cute. Can, it's cute. It's very cute. <laughs> and, and then probably my least favorite area in the park is, is again, um, the Mighty Ducks. And that's the furthest walk from the main building. Uh, some people may love it because it has its own pool, and I'm sure it's a quieter pool. Yeah. Uh, but if you're not into the Mighty Ducks theming, it's it's almost resembles something that would be at the sports resort. Yeah, because it is hockey themed because it's the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, so. but the icons in the building are the large duck goalie masks for hockey, and they have the on each side of the pool they have the goals set up. Mm -hmm. uh, one good thing about that pool, though, and I've I've never done it, but I can tell just by swimming in the main pool at, in the evening now that they do the star wars fireworks in mgm oh yeah if you're in the pool they the, you can cl clearly see them at night where mm -hmm. before that you really couldn't have a view of any good fireworks from the all-star resorts now that they're doing nightly fireworks in mgm for the uh, galaxy's edge and all coming up they're clearly visible from the pools and if you're at the duck pool you're actually even a little closer okay. to the mgm side of that resort and uh, I'll tell you, I sat in the pool and really enjoyed the fireworks. It's a good show, and uh, it's just something to do if you want to take a break from the parks, you want to get away from the crowds, float in a nice cool pool, and watch some fireworks. It's yeah, definitely. A great option. So that's kind of how the resort's broken up, and um, buses never seem to be an issue. Mm -mm. Uh, they still have the concierge desk if you need any help or assistance. They're always willing to help. Uh, very helpful. They have a cute little check-in area, so as you're checking in, the kids can go to this little mini theater and mm -hmm. watch some uh, car classic Disney cartoons. And they have the a red carpet. You can take pictures on the red carpet. Yes, they have a red carpet spread out in the lobby, so you can go right in as you check in and take some pictures as if you're walking down the red carpet to the award ceremonies. And it just, it's just a good resort. And it is a good resort. For what you pay for it, it's well worth the money. And again, we tend to stay at the Valley Resorts because when we go to Disney, uh, coming traveling from Jersey to Disney, we tend to want to stay as long as possible, and mm -hmm. if we could we could stay for almost three weeks uh, at a value resort in one vacation rather than going to a, a moderate or deluxe resort and maybe like staying, five days. You know, for, yeah, if that, <laughs> uh, I'd love to be able to spend a couple of weeks at the Polynesian, but it just doesn't allow us to. So I think a lot of people kind of shy away from the All Star Resorts, and I wouldn't. I would really go and check it out. Especially the movie. If you're a really Disney fanatic, mm -hmm. the movie's resort, it, it's, it's a great option. Can't beat it. It's yeah. so nicely themed. It's, it's just very nice. So before we end this, this episode, what would you rate the hotel if you had two out of five stars? Oh. Just so people can kind of have a gauge on how we feel about this resort. About this resort in particular, um, you know, I would probably give it I'd probably give it a four out of five star. If you haven't stayed there, give it a shot. It's worth it. Don't read into all these reviews where people say the walls are thin, it's loud. I've never had a bad night's sleep at never. the resort. And I've gone during cheerleading season when all the teams are there. I've stayed next to pretty large Brazilian groups that have come through. And, and tourist groups yeah. and stuff. We've never had an issue with sleeping and loud people. Never. No, no. It's always been uh, fairly quiet and everything's been pretty reasonable. There's, there's really nothing to complain about. Um, if you're concerned about the buses, then stay at the sports if you want to, and then just tour the other resorts to get your pictures. Uh, yeah, the definitely. rooms are identical, just a little bit of different theming, shower curtains and things like that, but you'll get the same value for your money by staying at any one of the all-star resorts. But if you're staying at one of them, wait, make your way over to the movies and get those pictures, because you're, you're definitely missing out if you don't make, create those memories. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, that looks like that's it for today. Give the movies a shot. If you have a favorite value resort, then leave it down below. We'd love to hear what it is. And if you have just a different resort in general that's your favorite, leave it down below. We always love to hear what everybody else likes because we're not done going to Disney. So we'll see what else we can see in the future. But yeah, so that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like this video, oh, no. Actually, before we close oh. out, let's just mention one thing. I'm not sure if we're going to have a lot of time to put up another video before we actually go. Okay. But maybe you'll see us in Disney. Uh, we'll be down there August 12th through the 23rd. Yes. So we'll be staying at the All-Star Resorts. Um, 
and we'll be wandering the parks. We have our schedule and we're excited to go. We're actually going to attend the very opening night of uh, Mickey's Not So Scary. Yes, on the 17th. So if you're going, we'll be there. <laughs> we have all of our cameras ready. We're going to bring back a lot of pictures and we're going to do some live reviews from down there and, and we'll really uh, have a lot to talk about after this trip. But uh, just wanted to throw that out. Uh, keep a lookout for us. If you see us, come say hi. Yeah, definitely. So with that being said, if you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up. And if you like us, then please subscribe and we will see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye.